Welcome to Justice League Hello Risen. This is Comic Story and we narrate comics and I'm Benny. To catch you up where we are, and the DC Metal event, the Batman Who Laughs, an evil version of Batman mixed with Joker, came into our reality. During No Justice, our heroes ended up freeing Perpetua, the mother of all reality, and the queen of reality who wants to bring back Doom to our reality, make it evil-based. The Justice League ended up losing the battle against Lex Luthor, and then Lex Luthor discovered the Batman Who Laughs is still here, and they have a fight between the two of them, the Batman Who Laughs versus Lex Luthor, to take over the whole planet. We last left off right at the beginning of that battle. Don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe, and let's start it. As Lex works tirelessly at his terminal inside of his former employee's apartment, he senses the owner walking into the room. Without looking, he asks Mercy, What do you want? You have a task needing completing. She pauses for a moment and says that she has a question, one that he might not like. Why is he doing this? Lex turns back asking, What? And Mercy goes on telling him that he's the smartest person on the planet. He ran one of the biggest companies that has ever existed. He saved the world and even joined the Justice League. He is the most human person that she has ever met in all of the most horrible, infuriating, incredible ways. Lex asks, And where did that get me? Mercy tells him pretty far, from where she's standing at least. His face turns to disgust, telling her, It got me nowhere. I spent my life slamming fists against a glass ceiling of potential. What good is the smartest men alive in the world where idiot farm boys can punch their way through a mountain? When representatives of an alien police force sit next to the children of God and the kings and queens of myth. Can you possibly imagine what it's like to excel beyond any measure of man and still find yourselves short in the face of God? Held down by their impossible power, made to feel small. I once saved the earth. Twisted doppelgangers of the Justice League came to subjugate them and I took them down, saved Earth so thoroughly that they even let me join the League. I had earned my place among the gods in their heaven and played by their rules and I was good at it. But do you know what happened to the multiversal doubles? Those cruel black mirrors of the League? The crime syndicate? Mercy says that she thought they died. And Lex yells, NO! The multiverse put them back. All that hard work gone. All of my accomplishments erased by some cosmic realignment that I was too small to perceive. I played this game every possible way. Sided with the gods. Tried to tear down the heavens over and over again. I learned my place. Saw humanity was meant to be their subjects. And then I had a vision. A vision of the end of time. When humanity had risen and killed all of the gods in my name. They named their city Lexor. They worshipped me above all else. Because it was I who taught them not to accept their place. I found Perpetua. I learned that mankind was destined for more power than I had ever imagined. And I set out to get that power for all of us. In the future, it is the gods who will bow to man. It is what I saw. It is what I know. This is what I fight for. Mercy points at another monitor asking, and where does he fit? Lex looks at the screen with the Batman who laughs and smiles, stating, it doesn't matter what he's fighting for, he's already lost. Now, we go back to the current time where we left things off as Lex's villains fight back the Batman who laughs infected individuals, and the two men are staring at each other in their war. The Batman who laughs smiles, asking, is this it? Is this your big plan? The villains have already lost their heroes. What does that get you in the end? Lex tells him, it keeps the army busy. It leaves you open, unprotected. The Batman who laughs then asks, is that what you're going to do? Punch me with those big bad Rubo arms. Lex tells him, no, I was thinking of heavier artillery. These bullets are designed to pierce Kryptonian skin. They should be able to handle some leather and Kevlar. He opens fire, but as the Batman who laughs dodges them, he leaps into the air, swinging down with his scythe, tearing open Lex's suit of armor. A hand forms from Lex's chest, reaching out, taking off the spiked metal crown from the Batman who laughs head, and Lex asks, Oh, that stings, doesn't it? You've been using that visor to ground you to this reality, to keep yourself from crumbling into the cosmic excrement that you've always meant to be. How long does it take? The Batman who laughs scowls, Not long enough! You also shouldn't have let me get that close! 
Lex looks down at his chest to see several blinking batarangs that have stuck there, and before he can react, they all explode, knocking the crown out of Lex's hand. The Batman who laughs kneels down to grab it, telling Supergirl, Give me some fire! Supergirl uses her heat vision to create a ring of fire around the two of them, and the Batman who laughs tells him, I understand that your new half-Martian body comes with some weaknesses. Let's hope that Perpetua is looking down on her little servant to see you lose. Lex reaches behind, taking out a syringe, telling him, You should have gone for the kill. The needle is jammed into the Batman who laughs neck, and he stumbles back, asking, What? What is this? And Lex smiles. It is a cure, in a manner of speaking. The dark multiverse energy flows through you as a creature of the dark, but your victims, they were made of the wrong kind of matter. The infected were injected with just enough dark metal to essentially broadcast the energy from you to them, to twist them into the darkest possibilities. Now that source is cut off, all those infected will revert back any moment. As the infection slowly begins to fade, all of the heroes look around and then they see Lex and the Batman who laughs. Supergirl calls out to the others, This is our chance! Get the monster and Luther! But before the heroes can move, Mercy runs out yelling, Wait! Don't you realize that Lex just saved you? This is the problem with all of you heroes. You just want to act good. You don't care about the actions that matter. Lex grabs a hold of the Batman who laughs, telling him, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but it won't be necessary. This is our cue to leave. Just then, Lex teleports away with Mercy and the Batman who laughs. And moments later, the Batman who laughs looks around at the large metal walls, asking, What is this place? Lex tells him that this is the Godhead. This is where he's going to die. Perpetua looks down from her throne, asking, What is it that you have brought me, Lex? Lex kneels, stating that he stymied the dark infection that has spread throughout the heart of the dark multiverse. He has subjugated the source of that power and brought it before her. It must be cast back down into the dark so they can finish their work. Perpetua tells him that he did well, but soon the Batman who laughs begins to laugh. <laughs> Lex is such a loyal dog. He fetched the bad thing and he brought it to its owner. The Batman who laughs rises to his feet, talking directly to Perpetua, telling her, I know you. I've heard your whispers. I heard all of what you promised Barbados that drew him into the light. I delivered Luther by telling him exactly what he was after. I gave you your name, and I gave him the means of unlocking your incredible power. Perpetua asks, for what reason? And the Batman at last tells her, I am but a false thing, a being from the other side of the black mirror. You are the mother of all reality. I am a child of unreality. That means that I see things that you don't. Things that your dog, Luther, has missed. You think that you destroyed the Justice League when in fact, they were pulled to safety by the great powers of the universe, set on a course to topple you if you don't act quickly. Lex shouts, you are lying. You are just trying to survive. And the Batman who laughs continues. Lex here is a good dog. He served you well. But he doesn't have the mind for the work that you need. Even when he believes in something, it's really just an excuse. It's just him trying to pretend that he's bigger than he actually is. He doesn't realize that the vision that you whispered to him, the glimpse of the future that made him so certain that he was to follow you, was only ever fiction. Lex asks, wait, what are you saying? And the Batman who laughs kneels before Perpetua. You don't need your pet anymore. You need a right hand, a strong right hand who already knows how to defeat the heroes of Earth who will rise up. You need me. Lex transforms his arm into a blade, yelling out, We must kill this thing at once! Can you really be entertaining this madness? Before Lex could slice, though, Perpetua holds out her arm, blasting Lex away, telling him, You dare speak to me like that! Lex gets up telling her, You are a spark of power trapped in a doorknob when I freed you. I will speak to you however I damn well please. Perpetua yells that he is not but flesh and bone before he met her. Would he care to remember what it felt like to be powerless, to be purely human once again? A bolt of lightning strikes Lex with a loud kazak, and he falls to the ground. Mercy runs over to help, but Lex begins to laugh. <laughs> I do not need your power to kill you. I don't need anything from you. I've never needed anything from you. He charges at Perpetua, her hand held up, telling him that she is disappointed. Before Lex could even get close, he is thrown backwards into a portal and Mercy quickly follows. 
Perpetua looks down at the Batman who laughs, telling him, Speak. Tell me of the things that I cannot see. Tell me how to stop the heroes from their current course of action. The Batman who laughs states that, You will find that it's a good one. Just look into my head. See what I have in store for them. Perpetua gazes and she smiles. Oh, oh my. <laughs> and down on Earth, Mercy runs through a field towards a smoldering crater, jumping in, asking Lex if he's alive. He lifts his hand as tears stream down his face, telling her, No, we are all dead now. And that concludes the Hell of Reason storyline, now moving into the new DC Metal storyline, The Dark Ages or whatever it's called. It's going to be starting up as soon as this whole quarantine and no comic book things end. So if you want to get more comic books, you want to see where this goes, make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we're still bringing you weekly comic books of older stories that have come out. Things like the Infected Supergirl storyline is still happening during this. All of that stuff is happening. Subscribe to our channel to get that. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you next time right here.